this video, we're going to look at the differences and relationships between speed, frequency, and bandwidth. A frequency is basically a sound wave going from 0 degrees right up to 360 degrees. This one cycle represents a frequency of one cycle per second, which is called one hertz. This is a sound wave at one hertz or one cycle per second. This is a sound wave at 16 hertz or 16 cycles per second. Here we're displaying cycles per second and sound at 190 hertz. Here we're displaying cycles per second and sound at 1085 hertz. What I want you to take away from this is that a higher sound pitch deliver more cycles per second, which is a higher frequency. And higher frequencies are needed for higher data rates. Now in this diagram, I'm going to use a transmit modem connected by a cable to a modem at the other end to show you how we use frequency and bandwidth to transmit data from one point to the other. Now above here is a breakdown of what's going on between these two modems. I'm going to show you exactly how we break down the frequency and the data to transmit across the physical medium, which in this case is this cable here. Now we're going to be using 30 hertz. I'm just going to use 30 hertz for simplicity. Normally the frequency is much higher for say a DSL line or cable line. But in this case, I'm going to use 30 hertz just for simplicity, okay? Now this 30 hertz will be broken down into channels from channel one to channel six. And I have five hertz in every channel. So I have from one to five in the first one, six to 10 in the second one, channel three, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, 21 to 25, and finally on channel six, I have 26 to 30 hertz being transmitted from one modem to the other. Now, the very first cycle here, let's say a generator is spinning, right? You, you have a generator which generates frequencies. It spins here at one cycle per second for the first one. The second cycle, it would spin twice, twice, 306 degrees twice to generate the second cycle. And the third rotation generating the third cycle and the fourth and the fifth being the highest frequency within this channel. Now on channel two, it will go from channel six right up to channel 10. Channel 10 would be highest frequency within this channel. So these frequencies keep on getting higher within the first second. This is all within one second. So now we would go all the way up to 30 hertz, which is the, the number of rotations per second, right? So we're sending 30 hertz, which is the number of cycles per second. So the, each one of these is a cycle, as I said before. So it's a maximum of 30. So this last cycle here would represent 30 hertz, 30 cycles per second. And this one would be the highest frequency, okay? Now, you'll notice that I sent five hertz within the first channel, and all five were received on the receive modem from one hertz to five hertz. Now channel two, the same thing from six to 10 Hertz. I receive them here and this goes on right up channel three, channel four, channel five, right up to channel six. But you'll notice on channel six, I sang from 26 to 30, which is also five Hertz, but I only receive 26 and 27. I did not receive 28, 29 or 30. What is happening here is that the bandwidth of this cable is not capable of receiving anything higher than 27 hertz. So the bandwidth of this cable is 27 hertz because it doesn't have the capacity to receive anything more. So the highest frequency that this cable can receive is 27 hertz. So that is a limitation of this cable 27 hertz okay so now you should have an understanding basically 
on how modems break down the frequency in order to send it from one modem to the other. How it breaks it down into channels. In this case, I use five cycles in each channel. With modems like DSL modems and cable modems, obviously the frequency is much higher. So the breakdown is different, but it's the same concept that I use here. Okay. Now next, I'm going to talk about data and how we use frequency and bandwidth to modulate our data from the transmitting modem to the receiving modem. Now in this slide, I'll be showing you how we would get our data from this transmitting modem to this receiving modem. Now I went ahead and added the internet where we have 60 bits per second coming from the internet. Now, as you know before, we had a frequency of 30 hertz. And I'm just using a smaller frequency, as I said before, for simplicity. Now, in the real world, you have a DSL line, which would have a frequency of 8 megahertz, for instance. And the data rate would be approximately 15 megabits per second. So the numbers are much higher in the real world. And the ch channel sizes would be larger as well. So I'm using everything smaller in this case but the concept is the same and that's basically what i want you to take away from this video the concept of how this is all done so we have our internet data now of 60 bits per second so i'm keeping it consistently small right the, in the real world would be much higher as i said before now we have our 60 bits per second coming in from the internet now or 60 bits per second, I just can't send 60 bits per second from transmitting modem to receiving modem. It has to be broken down just like our frequency is broken down into smaller sizes of 5 hertz per channel. Now I would break up our data into chunks of 10 bits per channel. So we have 10 bits each channel times 6 channels, so we have a total of 60 bits accounted for. Now. In order to get our data of 10 bits across on each one of these channels from channel 1 to channel 6, we use a concept called modulation. We're going to look at amplitude modulation, frequency modulation, and phase modulation. Now, for both amplitude modulation and frequency modulation, we can send one bit on each one of these cycles. So cycle one would be one bit, two one bit, three one bit, four one bit, and cycle five one bit. So this would be a total of five bits being sent on channel one from the transmitting modem to the receiving modem. But we want to send 10 bits. Now, for phase modulation now, we could send two bits per cycle, one bit on the positive side of this cycle and another bit on the negative side of the cycle. So we do this to each one of these cycles, that would be a total of 10 bits being sent from the transmitting modem on channel 1 to the receiving modem of channel 1. So 10 bits would be received here on channel 1. The same thing would happen on channel 2, 2 bits on every cycle, totaling 10 bits being received on channel 2. And this will continue right up to channel 5, where you have another 10 bits being sent. So 10 bits each channel times 5 channels, that's 50 bits in total. Now as for channel 6, remember we were only able to send through two cycles on channel 6 because of the bandwidth limitation of the cable. So we have cycle 26 and cycle 27, right? So only two hertz were able to send through these two cycles here. So we'll have one bit on the positive side of this cycle, another bit here just like before, and another bit on this cycle here and another bit here. So this is a total of four bits here on this particular channel. So we'll have 50 bits from channel 1 to 5 and 4 bits on channel 6. So we have a total of 54 bits per second being sent from the transmitting modem through the cable to the receiving modem. And a reduction of speed from 60 bits that were sent 
will have a reduction of 6 bits per second because of the bandwidth limitation of the cable. Now bandwidth limitation is a result of problems on the cable like noise caused, this, caused by crosstalk or things like capacitance reactance in the cable would cause bandwidth limitations. I'm going to put videos within the description below so that if you would like to see exactly what crosstalk is all about or what capacitance reactance is all about that cause bandwidth limitation in your cable, you can take a look at those videos and see exactly why this happened. If this video was helpful to you, I would like to see more videos like this one. Please don't forget to click on the like button. And if you haven't subscribed as yet, please don't forget to click on the subscribe and notification button below so that you'll be alerted as soon as our new videos are released. My name is Trevor from Telecom Training. Thank you for watching.